we're standing here in amongst some pine plantations in a soil type that is very typical of this part of the world, the Southern Cape, uh, which we call a new Cutanic horizon. Uh, and these two soil types, either the so-called oak leaf or Tukulu soil family, occurs quite frequently in this area. But before we start even to look at the soil, we've got to ask ourselves, what does the terrain look like in this part of the world? And we can see that there is a modest slope going down this way. What does that mean for water infiltration? First of all, it means that some water will drain on the surface if there's a heavy rainfall event. But secondly, we'll also notice that the A horizon is quite porous, and so it means that there'll be quite good infiltration at the same time. So let's look at the whole of the soil profile. It usually occurs in horizons, and we can see at the top here that we have got a moderately sandy horizon here, the A horizon, which is darkened by humus. We follow that up with a second horizon, which have got brown and orange colors. Then we go into a very stony horizon down here, sort of a second B horizon. And right at the bottom over here, we have weathering sandstone, so-called saprolite. I've got a piece in my hand here, which I can show you. So the sandstone is so weathered that it actually breaks up almost like a clod of soil. Let's take a closer look at the A horizon over here that we've identified. The questions we have to ask ourselves here is, first of all, what colors are we seeing? And is that indicative of oxidizing, periodic, oxidizing conditions, periodic water tables, or waterlogging conditions? Now, importantly, when we look at soil color, we mustn't look, for example, at an area like this, where the soil has been allowed to dry out in this roadside cutting. We've got to open up a face so that we get fresh soil material and look at the color over there. If we look at this color, we can see that it is a dark grayish brown. And that's definitely indicative of oxidizing conditions. Another factor that helps that process is the fact that the soil has got a very sandy texture, so water infiltrates quite well. It is unlikely that the water table will be perched in this position. So it then suffices to say that this is a horizon that is very easy for water to penetrate into. It's been darkened in certain places by humus coming from the forest floor. That humus that goes into the organic material that goes into the A horizon in amongst the mineral soil particles help with nutrition. They also help with the soil physical structure. So very typical A horizon. If we go a little bit deeper, we see that we go into a transition layer here and we grade into the B horizon. The B horizon has got a very different color. And again, we have to ask ourselves here, do we have oxidizing or reducing conditions? If we look closely, we can see that there are many yellow-brown areas there and a couple of other dark-brown areas. So what we have here is the beginning of clay skins or so-called cutins that are starting to form. And that happens under conditions where there's a little bit of clay migration. We call this in the South African nomenclature a new cutanic horizon because a cutin is a clay skin and this is only weakly developed. New cutanic, as in new natal for a newborn baby. So this new cutanic B horizon goes down all the way here and then we suddenly get into a very stony patch. Um, what does that mean for root penetration? Well, if we look over here, we see a very large root that has penetrated right through this situation here and has been exposed in this cutting. So obviously, not just in this case, but almost every case, is if we have a very broken up um, stone layer, it does not impede root penetration. But what does it do? If we look at the volume of soil contained in this horizon over here, the volume of mineral soil is much less 
than the volume of soil, for example, in this upper part of the B horizon. Because here it's almost 100% soil and here is a very large percentage of stone. So much less water can be held in this area per unit of depth. And obviously the nutrition is also limited by it because there's less volume of mineral soil that can be exploited. And then if we go down right to the bottom, we find a material that is busy weathering into the sandstone parent material that is the parent rock of this um, soil type. And this um, sandstone is already highly weathered, but you can still recognize that it was once sandstone, and this is then called saprolite, in other words, weathering rock. So it is a material into which tree roots can penetrate. It's a very good substrate to get additional water but still we see oxidizing conditions, largely browns and yellow or orange colors. So the entire profile is quite well aerated and we don't see any signs of long-term waterlogging in the soil horizon. So chaps, to sum up, the question is, is there any physical soil amelioration necessary in this horizon or in this profile? We said that we have a, an A horizon here that's quite friable, very good physical uh, texture and structure. Um, there's no signs of waterlogging. Then we have a new cutanic horizon over here, not mottled, but new cutanic. In other words, there are a few clay skins present, but still it shows us oxidized colors, browns and oranges and yellows. Then we have a stone layer where obviously the roots have penetrated right through into saprolite. I think the short answer is that absolutely no physical amelioration is needed here. The soil is perfectly good for deep root penetration, there's good nutrition here. There is absolutely no reason to do anything to the soil. Anything we do to the surface will just expose it to erosion. So here we have to use the saying that was coined by a colleague of mine, a guy with the name of Craig Norris. When you do soil preparation, do as much as is necessary, but as little as possible. This is one of those cases where you do as little as possible. In other words, you can only make a little planting hole into the topsoil Plant your tree in there, no more is needed.